and you're watching the communicators on C-SPAN. This week, we're on Capitol Hill visiting the Consumer Electronics Show here. A lot of manufacturers and tech companies are up here to show some of their wares to the policymakers on Capitol Hill. Here's some of the interviews that we did this week. And the San Diego-based company Qualcomm is also displaying here on Capitol Hill. We're joined by Alice Tornquist of Qualcomm. Alice Tornquist, what are you displaying here? What are these? Uh, yeah, so with Qualcomm, we're really focusing on all the ways that our company is improving the mobile experience uh, for consumers. Uh, and so we're featuring our, our new S4 Snapdragon chipset, which is enabling all sorts of new capabilities. Such as? Uh, so with this uh, gaming capability, the S4 has uh, tremendous uh, capabilities in graphics. Um, so you can get game console quality gaming capabilities with the, uh, with the chipset. And this is on a tablet, which we have to remind people. Uh, so um, getting that level of, of quality on a tablet is, is something new. Um, and uh, you also have with the S4 chipset, it's LTE, and it's multi-mode, so it, it has CDMA, GSM, HSPA+. Plus. So you have uh, those the ability to take advantage of the 4G LTE networks that are being deployed globally as well. So, so do you have to buy a Qualcomm product to get Snapdragon? Uh, so our chipsets are in uh, smartphones and tablets that are made by a whole variety of handset manufacturers and tablet manufacturers. What about spectrum usage on such high quality uh, video? Yes. So that's uh, one of the areas that we work on extensively also is improving spectral efficiency. So um, on uh, this video uh, demo, which um, we're, we've been able to reduce the bit, bit rate as well as the file size by half um, with some of our technology. And so that allows people to use Spectrum much more efficiently, which is a key priority And us. has that technology been developed in San Diego? Yes. Also here with the Qualcomm display is Edith Saldivar. Ms. Saldivar, what are you displaying here? What are you showing to um, the members of Congress and their staffs? Right. So Wireless Reach was established in 2006 to demonstrate how 3G and um, next generation mobile technologies can improve people's lives. We have about 73 projects in 31 countries. What I have here is one of our projects. This is a healthcare project and an education project. For the healthcare project, it's called Care Beyond Walls and Wires. And this is a wireless monitoring kit that allows patients with um, heart, congestive heart failure to monitor their health in their house daily. So they can use a mobile application and they can take their uh, blood pressure, they can take their blood oxygen level, um, their heart rate, their weight, and they can collect the data using the mobile app and then transmit it to their nurses and their doctors wirelessly on a daily basis. The doctors then are able to see the data and if they see a decline in the patient's health, they will um, contact the patient immediately so that it prevents them from having to be readmitted to the hospital. So do you see savings in healthcare dollars with this equipment? Definitely, definitely savings. Um, patients, um, there's about one million people that are admitted every year annually in the U.S. Um, with congestive heart failure and within 30 days about 60 percent of them are readmitted into the hospital. So this allows the doctors to have better um, monitoring of their health and um, intervene when they see the patient's um, health decline. Is this technology in use now? The technology is in use. It's in use now. It got, um, it was, um, it was launched in December at Flagstaff Medical Center in Northern Arizona and patients that are, live in remote areas and in um, Native American reservations are using it now to communicate and coordinate their health care with their professional providers. Edith Saldivar of Qualcomm. There's one other uh, technology here at Qualcomm that we want to display and this is Jeff Gordon of Qualcomm. Mr. Gordon, what are you going to show us we here? This one's a, a little uh, bit more fun. Smartphone form factor and it has an application called Smart Shutter on it. So what will happen is I can take a picture over and here. The camera, Bob, behind you, so you can see what's happening. We'll snap the picture until the subject smiles. So you'll see I press the shutter button, but since Alice isn't smiling, it's not taking the picture. And now she smiled, and we have a picture with a perfect smile in it. <laughs> Thank you very much for showing us that. Qualcomm on display here on Capitol Hill, Consumer Electronics Show on the Hill.
Well, you might have seen the new commercial, Dish TV's new commercial about the Hapa. And joining us here on Capitol Hill is Vivek Kemka, Hi, Peter, Vice President of Dish Network. Mr. Kemka, what is the Hapa? What does it do? So, Hopper. So the Hapa, <laughs> as everybody now calls it, is actually the most advanced uh, whole home <laughs> DVR box in the market today. We launched it at CES, uh, was available to customers uh, starting March 15th. Uh, it's a DVR that can record more shows than any other DVR in the market and can store more shows than any other DVR in the market. So with the Hopper, you can do up to six recordings at the same time, and you can store 2,000 hours of video on its two terabyte drive, and you can actually watch it in HD across your entire home with its little baby, the Joey. So uh, one hopper, multiple joys, and you get TV in every room of your home. Who developed this? So this was developed by a sister company, EchoStar. Uh, so they, they built all of our uh, boxes traditionally, and uh, in conjunction with our requirements, they built the hopper and the joy. Uh, now, what is, what is the prime time feature on this? So, you know, uh, we start, as we started building the hopper, we're trying to see what do consumers want, right? So one is they want to store more shows. They want to record more shows. But then at the end of the day, you look at it, 50% of what they record during the hours of 7 and 10 are from the broadcast networks, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. So what the Hopper cleverly does is if the customer enables it, uh, it can record all the channels, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox, using a single tuner every night, and it stores it for eight days. So you can go back in time eight days. That basically allows you to go to last week's show. If today is you know, a Tuesday, I can go to last Tuesday's show, catch up on it uh, all the way till this uh, today. And if I like a show, I can always save it to my DVR. But if you think of uh, prime time anytime, it's like a Hulu or a Hulu Plus, except that you get your shows the same day they launch. What does it retail for? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, historically we don't retail our boxes. It's given as part of a subscription. It's a lease model, and the hopper is available to new customers uh, at no charge. So it's uh, free with a new subscription. Now, you've also, what are you doing up here on the Hill? What's the importance to you at DISH about being on Capitol Hill? So, there are a couple of things, right? One is, uh, you know, as you look at what consumer features, uh, things like prime time anytime, things like mobile video. We definitely want to show what we're doing around mobile video, so we actually have a demo of our mobile video here. Uh, it's our Sling-based uh, app that allows me to watch my live TV from my home uh, anytime I want, anywhere I want. That's important to us. Uh, we are very concerned about energy, and the new Joey is uh, super small, super energy efficient, and we wanted to talk about it. It's uh, uh, it's not certified as yet, but it's passed all the tests for Energy Star V3 rating and DISH has become an energy star partner. And the third thing we wanted to talk about at the Hill was uh, rural broadband. Uh, you know, uh, historically rural, rural areas have not got very good broadband access, and we just introduced a product in uh, Feb of this year, along with Viasat, uh, that allows uh, people in uh, rural America to get 12 megabit download speeds. Uh, and uh, you know that's co comparable to almost any speed you can get in urban America. So, and I those think are the you were things. telling uh, Mignon Clyburn of the FCC about that product, that's weren't you? Back yep. at the CES. back at the CES. So the products, right? So that's the modem, and that's the transceiver. And uh, you know, it's it's quite a it, it's not a very pretty looking piece of technology. But if you think about it, this is a one watt transmitter that transmits a satellite signal a signal all the way to a satellite 22,000 miles above the Earth. Right, so a pretty impressive piece of technology and allows for super high broadband speeds. Any of your equipment manufactured in the U.S.? Uh, we do have a lot of our distribution and remanufacturing plants here, but most of these are manufactured overseas. Why? Cost? I think it's uh, both cost as well as, uh, I think, uh, you know, the uh, supplier base. So most of the, uh, the chipset manufacturers and all the component manufacturers, the hard drive manufacturers, they're all mostly in Asia. And so it makes sense to assemble right where they are, so it reduces the uh, overall cost of uh, manufacturing. But we do have all of our call centers based in the U.S. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't ship our call centers overseas. Uh, if you pick up the phone and you call this network, uh, you will be talking to somebody in the U.S. So. Vivek Kemka is vice president of Dish Network, and we've been talking to him here on Capitol Hill. Adrian McAllister is with the Google Corporation. Ms. McAllister, what are you here demonstrating on Capitol Hill? Today I'm here showing Google TV, 
which is an operating system for connected TVs, just like Android as an operating system for mobile phones and tablets. Google TV is an operating system for connected or smart TVs. And in fact, we are built off of the Android operating system. So can anybody have Google TV or get Google TV? Uh, any consumer can get uh, Google TV. Uh, our initial launch partners um, are Sony and Logitech. Um, so they have, we have devices from Sony. They have a Blu-ray player with the Google TV operating system, uh, as well as a television with a Google TV operating system and baked into the TV itself. And Logitech has a peripheral device uh, as well, um, a streaming player. And we've got new hardware coming out from four new OEM partners in the next several months as well. So, what are the advantages of Google TV? Why would somebody get Google TV instead of cable, instead of satellite TV, instead of just broadcast TV? So, we don't view Google TV as an alternative to cable TV. We actually think it adds and enhances your live TV experience the same way that uh, mobile phones didn't eliminate landlines and uh, cable didn't eliminate broadcasts. We think smart TV really adds and enhances uh, the you know, cable subscription viewing experience. But uh, what's unique uh, about Google TV is that we are um, built to work with the existing experience and there's a couple of uh, particular things. One is that there's zero input switching. So you're watching live TV and you can press the home button on your uh, remote. And is this the Google remote? This is one of the remotes, the initial remote that Sony has built. Uh, and um, you can access this and get a home screen launcher. Um, this is a view of some of the apps, which is customizable. You can uh, customize these apps. So if there's one in particular that you always use, you can uh, select that. Um, but the key is you're not having to go from input one to input two. You can very quickly go from live TV to web video content. And Google TV is really about bringing millions of channels of web video to the television. Um, one of the ways that we're doing that is we built a browse and discovery experience for Google TV um, that gives you a view not only of what's available to you, on live TV. So when you say live TV, broadcast, cable channel. Exactly. So if you have a Comcast, a Time Warner, a Dish subscription, uh, when you set it up and you tell us that you live in a particular zip code, we'll show you what's available to you uh, through that live subscription today. And if you opt in to let us uh, see what you've watched or what you've rated, we'll personalize this experience for you as well. So you can go in here and say you want to watch uh, 30 Raw, um, and it will uh, navigate directly there. Um, it, you can also uh, press the menu button to rate, say you love 30 Raw, uh, or never show me you know, from this channel again. So this is the live TV experience. Um, but C what's also C-SPAN on here somewhere? Of course it'll be. And we can search for C-SPAN, I'll show you in, in a minute. Um, but we also have a view of um, TV content and movie content, not only from live TV, but from across the web, from third-party providers. So if it's a Friday or Saturday night, and you want to see what's available, and you haven't seen Pulp Fiction in 15 years, you can select Pulp Fiction. You can say that you want to watch it. And you can see that it's actually coming on soon through uh, some of your existing channels from your cable subscription, or you can rent it now from Amazon. Or if this has reminded you that you wanted to see Reservoir Dogs, you can actually go in here and see that it's available for free because you have a Netflix subscription right now, or again, you could rent it from Amazon. Uh, and this has also been integrated into um, search or uh, works with search. So if you wanted to search for C-SPAN, uh, you could do that and you can go navigate there. You don't have to remember what channel C-SPAN is uh, from your subscriber. Um, you can find your... Book TV. What's down here on Book TV? 
uh, here, you can go in and see all the Book TV available episodes. So there's only one available Book TV episode coming on soon that, that we've uh, tracked on C-SPAN 2. And you could set your DVR if you wanted to. Um, you could also navigate, because we're searching across the web, uh, to C-SPAN's YouTube channel and go directly uh, to YouTube as well. So, Is there a cost if somebody wanted to buy Google TV? There's no cost for the operating system itself. Uh, and again, our business model is that we license the operating system for free to our OEM partners, but there's no uh, ongoing uh, fee to consumers at all. So at, what kind of TV do you need to, to uh, load, essentially, Google TV? Uh, so you need any TV that has an HDMI input. So if you bought a TV a year or two ago and you're perfectly happy with the picture quality, but you want to be able to get internet connectivity and get access to all the millions of uh, web video channels, then you can buy a peripheral device from, from Google TV and from one of our OEM partners. Um, now, and, one other thing I noticed, in this I see you're playing uh, C-SPAN right now, uh -huh. or the YouTube channel. Yeah. Charles Colson just died. Adrian McAllister, I noticed when you had the app bar uh -huh. up there earlier, there was Google Chrome. Yep. You can also yes. we have access the internet. Yes, full Chrome browser. So you can um, type in essentially any URL that you'd like and access it. You could check your email uh, on your TV if you wanted to. But it, it is a full and open uh, Chrome browser. And we have been talking with Adrienne McAllister of Google. She's in the New York office about Google TV. We're on Capitol Hill. This is The Communicators. Jean Rousseau is with Motorola Mobility. And Motorola is having a display here on Capitol Hill. Jean Rousseau, what are you showing to the members of Congress and their staff? Hi, we're showing our latest and hottest devices Such here as. in DC. Well, this is the Motorola Droid Razor Max. It is our hottest smart device. It is, um, I mean, it's absolutely exquisite. It's beautiful. It's thin. I mean, look how thin this is. Um, feels great in your hands. Um, but the best thing I think about this phone is the battery. Um, there is not a single smart device in the market that can compete with the Motorola Droid Razor Max when it comes to battery life. You can talk on this phone for 21 hours straight without having to recharge. Um, so it's great for personal use. It's fantastic for business use. It's great for somebody like me who always is forgetting to recharge your phone. Um, so I absolutely love it. I just got it, and you know, I can't say enough good things about it. What's the importance of showing something like this to the policymakers here in Capitol Hill? Well, I think you know it's really important because it's showing that we're continuing to evolve the technology. Uh, I think there's going to be a number of use cases where you can see battery life becoming more and more important, and Motorola is absolutely leading in this space. Um, you know, what's nice about this, and the nice about a lot of our phones, is they're great for personal use, but they're also enterprise ready, and they're great for business use. And I think that's something that all of the policymakers can appreciate. Junior, so you also have some other equipment over here on the side. Yeah, before I get to over there, I absolutely have to show you. Photoactive, it's one of the hottest products here. People are really excited about this watch. Uh, we introduced it about the same time that we launched the Motorola Droid Razor Max. It's another first in Motorola's long history of firsts. It's the world's first GPS fitness tracker and MP3 player. And what that means is it can track all of your fitness performance stats. So when we had it at CES, our social media director actually tracked how many steps she took, how many calories she burned, um, how many calories she ate, everything she did at CES. And if you've ever been to CES and walked, you can only imagine what those stats were like. It was pretty mind-blowing. But what I love about this product is the MP3 smart music player. So everybody loves working out to music, but you know you work out better to some songs than others. But you know that intuitively. You've never been able to prove it with science. Well, now you can. This product will actually track which songs you work out better to and create custom playlists so that you can always work out better and smarter. And it's absolutely phenomenal. 
What else do you have over here? What is this, Jane Russo? So we've been talking for years as an industry about making the connected home smart. Now we're finally doing it, and we're making it simple as well. So Motorola launched our connected home platform, and we launched our four home software with Ryzen late last year. So now you as a consumer can stay connected to your home wherever you go. So what does that mean? Verizon is offering a number of different packages with um, indoor cameras, wireless sensors, door locks, um, etc. Um, you put those in your homes, um, you install our software, and then with this really easy, customizable platform, you can see what's going on in your home, whether you want to see how you're consuming energy and um, lower your energy consumption during peak hours so you can have a lower energy bill. Or if you go on vacation and you realize, oh my gosh, I forgot to turn off the air conditioner, well now you can just do that with the push of a button and you're not going to come home to a really high energy bill. Or if you have a teenage son or daughter who's going to come home from school and you want to be able to unlock the door for them, now you can do that and you can get an alert on your cell phone or your tablet in a way that's easy and customizable for you, all thanks to Motorola. We've been looking at some of the new products out by Motorola Mobility. We've been talking with Jean Rousseau here at the Capitol, the Consumer Electronics Show on Capitol Hill. Lou Aronson is the founder and CEO of an organization called Votify. Mr. Aronson, what is Votify? We're a mobile-based polling company that's built on top of a political social network where we use survey responses that you give us to connect you with other like-minded individuals to discuss the issues with and opposing-minded people to debate the issues with. What kind of technology? How do you do it? It's, it's mobile-based, mobile mobile-focused, mobile focused, and mobile for us means whether it's an email through your laptop at home or a tablet or an HTML link through an SMS or an app in your iPhone. We generate survey data to you, and then based on the responses you give us, we curate content from all over the web, from right, left, and middle, to give you a little bit more of a well-rounded view of the news. And then we track that, and we cluster you with other individuals in the back as a recommendation engine almost. So we find issue symmetry where we align, and then issues where you're apart, and then based on your activity, you weight what's most important for you. So it, it, walk, walk me through, if we, if we were to sign up for Votify, do we sign up, do we pay? What kind of information do we get at that so you, point? So you go to Votify, you can go to the website, or you can download the app right now through the iTunes store. We're developing it for the Android market as well. So it's either votifi.com. You can register with Facebook if you want, or you can register with an email or your SMS. And then you answer a series of questions. And those questions start formulating your profile. And then you'll see news articles that come up. And then you can read the news articles. And you can enter discussions if you're so inclined. You can start one if you want, or you can see one that's taking place uh, that's going on uh, at the time. We had a, we, we did one last month on National Meatball Day. May, March 9th was National Meatball Day. So how do you like your meatball? It wasn't purely political, but there was a lot of activity that day about the meatball. And then it evolves over time. And the more you participate with the news articles and the surveys and the poll of the day, the more refined your profile gets. And then it starts to show you, and you saw the fuel gauge, it shows you where you break down on the issues. So what do you do with that information? Do you sell it to campaigns? Right now, um, we're, we're, we're gathering our database. And we've had about 1.2 million questions answered since June of last year. Uh, and what we're building out is a network that operates as, as a central connection point for the American population to first of all communicate about politics, civil discourse, and engage. And part of the challenge that politicians are having now is polling is tied primarily to the landline phone. And Americans are abandoning landlines at a rate of about 700,000 a month. And 7% of kids between the age of 18 and 29 have landlines. So how do you have a realistic data capture? And we're trying to solve that problem. And then we can either sell big block data on evolving trends and issues, or even pull people to a cell phone, not by calling, but by sending them two or three questions, and then they just hit the radio buttons and go from there. What's your background, Mr. Aronson? I was a practicing lawyer. 
um, but I've been a political junkie my entire life. I worked on my first campaign in 1972, handing out leaflets with my uncle, and I was hooked. Uh, George McGovern, um, in a family that I had one Nixon voter and one uh, McGovern voter in our family, and it was, you know, it was a great time to come of age with Watergate and then the Carter years and then Iran-Contra and the falling of the wall. And I always stayed involved, but then I took a little bit more of a traditional path into the practice of law. Had my own law firm for 14 years. And then in 08, we were standing at a bus stop putting our kids on the bus and everybody was complaining about the robocalls. One guy wasn't complaining and I asked him why and he said he didn't have a landline. And I, right then and there, said, you know what, I ought to start a mobile phone-based polling company because I carry a 202 cell phone, I live in a 301, and I never answer my phone, and no one knows what or how I think except on game day. And so I left the practice of law in November, and um, we've got this startup company, and we've, we've been really fortunate to have the folks at Startup America help us out and bring us down here today. Uh, we were just down at Austin at South by Southwest, which where we were a finalist in the accelerator competition for a hot new mobile company, and uh, it's been it's been great. You know, it's been a lot of fun so far. So again, if people want to sign up or view your site, what is the website? www.votify.votify.com. Lou Aronson, president and fo or founder and CEO of Votify. Thank Thanks, you, Peter. sir. Appreciate it. Mobileye is a company that is on display here at the Consumer Electronics Show on Capitol Hill. Isaac Littman is the CEO of Mobileye. Mr. Littman, if you'd start by telling us what is Mobileye? Mobileye is, is a company that manufactures collision prevention systems based on artificial vision. So we actually manufacture a camera that can see. Once we have a camera that can see, it's like an electronic eye. You install it in your car and then your car can see. Once your car can see, it can help you avoid the accidents with cars, with pedestrians, with bicyclists. It can see the traffic signs for you and tell you what traffic signs it saw. So many things that we can help the driver in order to help him you know, get to work and to home safely. Where did the idea come from? Who developed the technology? The technology was developed by us. The idea was that uh, today, 93% of the accidents are because of uh, the driver. And of these, 80% are because of inattention. Driver inattention, everyone knows, driver distraction are a very uh, big issue in the industry today. So how can we help the driver? We need to take this uh, element from the equation of the accidents. Replacing the driver is impossible, so we need to help him. And to help the driver imitate an eye, you know, like the human being, we are using our eyes to drive to see what is around us. This is what behind the idea. Well, you've got a video playing up yes, here sir. on the screen. I'd like you to describe what are we seeing here in well, this video. Well, this is actually what is what happens inside the camera. The detection of all the pedestrians, all the objects, with distance to all of them. So when you drive, you know the 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 mobilized system can seem very quiet, but we analyze everything, we detect everything around, we watch uh, for every every one of the pedestrians in case he wants to run to you, towards your car. So this is actually our benefit. You have a system that watches over your, your back once you are driving. Now, Mr. Lippmann, this is what the camera is seeing. Correct. Is this what the, the user is also no. seeing with all these No, lines? the user does not see it because that, that will be a distraction. The user just gets a warning, and as you can see on the right-hand side of the, uh, uh, of the screen, you have different kind of warnings that the user can get either on his cell phone because we can connect to his cell phone via Bluetooth or on a dedicated display that can simply show the user what kind of uh, warning happens and also omit uh, an audio warning uh, to the user. The user, usually after two weeks driving, he hears the noise, he understands exactly what he did wrong and he applies the brakes or avoid or, uh, or uh, uses the steering wheel, the steering wheel to avoid an accident. Why are you up here on Capitol Hill? What's the importance of showing this to policy? First of all, we think that uh, today everyone understands that distracted driving is the major issue with the uh, road accidents. We want people to be safer. We want to expose our technologies in the Capitol Hill. We think that there are many people who can leverage that technology in order to, to help us save lives, to help us spread the word out there and to help you know, the families and the drivers get back home safely. Is Mobileye yet available 
to any post. consumers. Mobila is available for the consumers. Right now we are working with several retail chains and we are getting more and more into the retail market. And uh, definitely, um, anyone who wants the system simply can email us at info at mobilite.com. We'll hook him up with the right installer around him. Isaac Littman is the CEO of Mobileye here at the Consumer Electronics Show in Washington. Stephanie Lundberg is with the Ford Motor Company and they are on display. You have a display here at the Consumer Electronics Show on Capitol Hill. Why is Ford at this tech show? Uh, essentially, Ford is a technology company. I mean, you these days, companies really have to innovate and bring technology into their overall plans in order to, to stay up with the consumer demands or demanding more consumer technology um, in their lives, in their cars. And Ford is looking to do that in a safe way. Um, consumers are looking for information and updates and access to information in their cars. They want to make sure it's done safely. So what we are... What we are demonstrating here today is health and wellness in the car, uh, working with third party um, industry leaders, companies in the medical device field and health management field to develop systems where people can access that health information hands free uh, on the go. So what, what are you, what are you uh, specifically displaying or talking sure. to lawmakers about? Um, a few things. We have here a, a call and alert app. This is actually currently available on your iPhone. Uh, Ford is working with SDI Health, which is the maker of this app, um, to provide a way to have this information read out to you, again, hands-free, through a sync-enabled Ford vehicle uh, while you're on, in, in the car. Now, why is this important? Well, let's say you're driving through an area that has high pollen level counts. This would be able to tell you on a location-based um, service to tell you that you might want to avoid this area and drive around it. Well, the part of the policy, the policy part of this though, is the hands-free that you mentioned. Sure. Yeah, hands-free, again, you know, Ford is very, very focused on um, developing, you know, systems that are hands that allow you to put your hands on the wheel, keep your eyes focused on the, um, you know, the task of driving. Um, so all these systems, again, if we know that people are going to want access to health information, which we've seen a lot of studies, mobile health is a, um, you know, a growing trend, uh, that they're able to do that in a way that keeps them safe while they're driving. Now there's another safety aspect of it as well, um, particularly for people, let's say, with diabetes. Uh, where you know if, they, if their glucose levels go lower, they have some symptoms that might interfere with their driving. So we are also working with a medical device company, Medtronic, that would connect via Bluetooth with your sync system again to, um, to tell you when your glucose levels might be dipping. You might want to pull over. If you didn't, you know some of the symptoms are blurry vision or lightheadedness that could interfere with your driving. So again, it all comes back to safety. Stephanie Lundberg of Ford, thank you for your time. Thank you.